we are looking at representing functions as a rule in tables and in graphs. Now first we're going to take a look at our vocabulary. So our vocabulary today, we're going to define a function. It's a relation in which every input, in, which every input, your independent variable, has exactly one output dependent variable. So if we have an input with two outputs, we do not have a function. So every input can only have one output. Now an independent variable, we've looked at that for a few days. Just more clarification of what um, some more synonyms for that. Um, when we're looking at independent variables, we also refer to that as our domain. And it's match for a dependent variable. We call it our range. Our independent variable will always be our input. Our dependent variable will always be the output. Our independent variable will always be our x values, and our dependent variable will always be our y values. So going back to when we looked at independent and dependent variables, your y value depends on your x value. And every x value will only have one particular unique y value. All right, let's jump into our first problem. All right, so we are going to identify the domain and range of this function. Now our domain, once again, are our input values. So our domain here is the set 1, 3, 5, and 7. And we'll put brackets on either end. You want to make sure you're going in increasing order, so from smallest to greatest. Our range are our output values. And our range is 0, 2, four, and six. Now, when we're listing our domain and range for this particular function, we're just going to list the values that are expressed here. Now, back in our vocabulary page, oh, okay, first, okay, one second, we'll do the rule. So the rule is meaning what is the equation there? Now, keep in mind, our dependent depends on what our independent value is. So we're gonna set it up as y equals and we're looking at what we do to 1 to get 0. That's the same process of what we do to 3 to get 2, the same as what we do 5 to get 4, and 7 to get 6. So each of our input values, if we subtract them by 1, we get our output values. So our rule here is our input value, which we talked also is our x value, minus 1. So that will be the rule of our function. Now to graph this function, we have our x values, which are our input values, our y values, which are our output values. Once again, these groups, terms go together. So we have the ordered pair 1, 0, so we're graphing 1, 0, 3, 2, 5, 4, and then 7, 6. Now we do not connect the dots here since we're just graphing the function represented by the table. So we will not connect those dots. So it's an incontinuous function. It's not continuous. All right, two, I want you to hit pause and work through that one. All right, welcome back. Our domain for this function is 1, 2, 3, and 4. Our range for this function, once again, our output values, is 4, 5, 6, 7. Our rule for this particular function is going to be y equals x plus 3. And when we graph this function with the ordered pair 1, 4, 2, 5, 3, 6, and then 4, 7. Let's take a look at a slightly different variation of this problem. So we're going to take a look. We're going to first make a table for the function. We're going to identify the range, and then we're going to graph it. So the domain of the function, y equals x plus 2, we're told is 0, 2, 5, and 6. So for our table, we're going to have our x values. And once again, that is our domain, and we're given that. So it's 0, 2, 5, and 6. Then to find the y values, we're substituting the x value in to get the corresponding y value. So for this first one, our y value equals 0 plus 2, which is 2. And then we get 2 plus 2, which is 4. 5 plus 2, which is 7. 
and 6 plus 2, which is 8. So we're identifying our range, because we already made our table. And our range here, once again, we're just looking at these our output, our y values, in ascending order, will be 2, 4, 7, and 8. And then we're asked to graph it. So we have the ordered pair 0, 2, 2, 4. Then we have 5, 7, and 6, 8. Now we only graph those four points because we get, we're given a restricted domain. So we only want the ordered pairs that correspond with that given domain. All right, for this fourth one, and we hit pause, work on it, and then come back. All right, welcome back. Our table here, we're going to have 0, 1, 2, 3. Our y values, keep in mind, we're substituting in. So here we get 0 0.5 times 0 minus 3, which equals 0 minus 3. So that y value is negative 3. And then here we have negative 2.5, negative 2, and negative 1.5. And then we're going to graph these. So we have 0, negative 3, 1, negative 2.5, which is in between negative 2 and negative 3, 2, negative 2, and then 3, negative 1.5. And once again, since we're given a restricted domain, we do not connect the dots. We're only graphing the corresponding y values with these x values. Hope you have a great evening, and I will see you in class tomorrow.